Hello YouTube, welcome back to Patrick Boyle on Finance. And so I've received a few more questions about uh, oil and oil ETFs. And so I'm just gonna try and uh, get a quick video out today just to explain what's going on. So I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, oil went negative there two days ago. How does this affect various uh, things? And in particular, the USO oil ETF. So let's talk about what would happen if USO, the ETF, went negative? Okay, so basically April 20th, 2020, goes down in history as the day when the US benchmark price for crude dropped below zero for the first time, and then it kept falling. It went to minus $37.63 a barrel. And so I put up a video that day explaining how that works and that it's not, it's not really as big of a deal as maybe a lot of people think. And I'll, I'll link to that, uh, that video in the description if you wanna watch that one. Um, but it really, all of that just really relates to how futures markets work. And I know a little bit about futures, so I tried to explain it in that video. So it's not so much, that wasn't so much a story of that actual oil prices were negative. It's more a story that the price of physically settled front month West Texas Intermediate oil futures is negative for a short period of time. And essentially a lot of it related to just the role of futures contracts. The contract was expiring the next day and basically people who owned it uh, financial traders who owned it had to get into the next month the the June contract or had to take delivery of physical oil and so what really was happening was financial investors in oil wanted out none of the refiners wanted to take their positions from them or none of the like pipelines or the the physical users of oil wanted to necessarily take the positions from them as quickly as they wanted them taken away and so the the price went negative for for a short time there and the reason for that is essentially just with this COVID-19 lockdown, there's less demand for oil and oil is still being pumped. And so anyhow, financial traders basically had to pay people quite a bit of money, it turned out, in order to take oil off of their hands because they are not really users of oil. They are speculators in, in oil. So while it's unprecedented the futures market is actually set up reasonably well to deal with this so futures trade on exchanges there's a clearinghouse i have a video explaining how clearing houses work there's margins that are posted daily by both buyers and sellers uh, everyone who trades uh, you know oil futures has to be credit worthy and there, there's a, a system set up that basically the money can move from one person to another based on the price moves and if the price goes to negative while that hasn't happened before it can be dealt with reasonably well with the whole situation of margins and clearing houses and so on so essentially there's just these well understood channels uh, where money can move from the long party to the short party or vice versa and if we have this negative price it all works out now what's a bit weird and a bit interesting is that people have built other financial products on top of oil futures, right? So that's where the USO, the US oil ETF comes in. And that's a product that implicitly assumes that the price of oil uh, cannot go below zero. Um, so futures markets have margin where everyone has to put up an amount of money that sort of shows that they're able to uh, to sustain losses and it's able to deal with a, a customer, an investor losing more money than they actually have uh, on hand in their brokerage account. Uh, for example, Interactive Brokers, one of the big futures brokers out there, um, made an announcement yesterday that they had, I think yesterday or the day before, I think it was yesterday, that some of their customers lost more money than they had margin on on hands and so interactive brokers recognized an aggregate provisional loss of around 88 million dollars now that just means that they will have to chase their customers for that 88 million dollars interactive brokers 
probably won't lose that much. They may lose something if some of their their customers don't have any further funds, but that's uh, you know that's for you to read in the news in the coming weeks and months. But basically, that's how the futures market works. Now, what about USO, the the ETF? Well, if you buy a share of stock or if you invest in an ETF in your brokerage account and its value goes to zero, you lose all of your money, right? That that makes sense, but no one can ask you for more money because you, you didn't sign up for that. That's not in your agreement in your brokerage account. And so if the value of USO has not gone negative, it probably possibly won't go negative. But if it does, the whole structure of an ETF that invests in derivatives like that is problematic. Now, it's worth noting that USO is 30% of the futures market for oil, right? So they're a big part of the futures market. A lot of money comes into USO and goes into the futures market. And they typically do something very predictable. They follow the, the rules of the ETF, which is basically that they invest in the front month uh, contracts and then they roll into the uh, the next month's contract usually I think about two weeks before expiration so they weren't hit by the negative prices but the worry is now there and so I put up a video yesterday even explaining about how retail investors have been piling in and there aren't even enough shares of USO to go around so essentially the price of USO is able to now disconnect from the futures price, which is what has happened in the market. Um, they've also, after I made yesterday's video, they made an announcement, uh, a regulatory filing saying that they can buy longer dated contracts. So they're no longer required to do that really. A predictable thing of investing in the front month and rolling two weeks before into the next contract. And of course, that's a problem if you're the biggest trader in the market and everyone knows exactly what you're doing. That That's kind of problematic to begin with. But the structure of USO and the structure of an ETF or an ETP, which stands for a, a exchange traded product, is that they're, they're set up like a limited liability company. They, they essentially, the customers put their, the investors put their money into the ETF. The ETF invests in these derivatives with the assumption that the derivatives can't go to a negative price, which now we've seen they can. And should uh, the the type of futures should whatever uh, expiration of futures USO has invested in flip to negative well the customers actually can't lose more than they put in and USO doesn't actually have more money sitting around to pay um, the other side of those futures contracts should the price go negative so there's a huge question mark over what this means it's worth asking at this point is an investment in USO now an option right because with an option um, you know essentially if the price goes up if it's a call option if the price goes up you make money if the price falls below the strike price which the strike price on this option is zero um, if the price falls below that you don't lose additional money so we could even ask whether uh, the premium in, in in USO relates to the technical uh, issues I explained yesterday about them not being able to issue more shares, but also it might just really be like option premium where investors are aware of this fact. So anyhow, that's today's update on USO. I, I will try to stop doing daily updates on, on the oil markets because it's not necessarily my greatest expertise, but people seem to find this stuff useful. Uh, so anyhow, have a great day. Talk to you guys later. Bye.